Two weeks ago, I saw Her, and this is one of my favorite movies ever. I think this movie's greatest strength is how accurately predictive it is. And I feel like it's even more accurate to modern day than it was in 2013 when it came out. It's actually kind of scary for what's to come. And I can't wait to discuss these ideas, so welcome to Classic Explained, episode 19, Her. To break this movie down, we're gonna use two themes. One, false connectedness, where we'll discuss the setting and background, the color palette, Theodore's job, the sex hotline, and the disrespectful video game character. And two, authenticity of humanity, where we'll discuss Theodore's divorce, Theodore and Samantha's relationship, AI compared to humanity, the mom video game, Theodore's letters, and the ending with the final monologue, and much more. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you wanna see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, false connectedness. The first time I saw this movie, back in 2014, I fell in love with it. I adored it for its foresight on where our world was going. But also, when watching this movie, it gave me this cold feeling. It was pretty uncomfortable. It made me feel isolated and further away from everything around me. And at the time, as a 16 year old, I couldn't really find a reason for it. But now, eight years later, I feel like I understand why. Everything existing in the world of this film is so detached from its immediate surroundings. Everything and everyone is disconnected. The majority of the extras in this film are all alone, either looking at a screen or speaking to an OS through their earpiece. Both of the long-term romantic relationships between our main characters are falling apart. Amy and Charles are splitting up, and Theodore and Catherine are filing for divorce. Even the color palette and color grading of the film signifies this emptiness. The range of colors is vast but the visual filter on the film feels limiting. The colors never pop. So even though there's this wide range of colors in the movie, the colors never feel as vibrant as the colors we see in the real world. And this perfectly signifies what an AI dominated world is like. Everything is beautiful and almost real, but the nuances and vibrance of our natural world feels faded. And this weakens our connection with one another. In the opening scene, we see Theodore reciting a letter to a loved one with the most sincere and poetic language, only to find out, moments later, that he's writing it for someone else, to someone he doesn't even personally know. That's because his organization is built around this service where talented writers write letters for people to their loved ones. The letters are more beautifully written from an objective point of view, but they're completely missing the beauty of sincerity, which is the most human aspect of writing a letter. This opening scene perfectly establishes the major theme of false connectedness. And when society runs so much on this false connectedness, there are of course gonna be unfortunate side effects. Digital stimulation such as pornography and social media makes us more and more desensitized. And we see this desensitization demonstrated in the film. During Theodore's online sex call, the woman tells tells him to choke her with a cat. The other user in Theodore's video game curses him out constantly and jokingly threatens to have sex with Samantha in front of him. I also notice that everyone lives in these beautiful apartments and works in these stylish buildings and roams these gorgeous cities. But the world is so numb to societal progress that these luxuries are simply the norm and are never cherished or appreciated. So overall, it was this idea of false connectedness and AI's inauthenticity that was making me feel so lonely and detached attached as a viewer eight years ago. And of course, it's inevitable that our main character who lives in this world feels the exact same way. Theme number two, authenticity of humanity. As said before, our main character Theodore is filing for divorce, and the breakup with his wife has left him extremely unmotivated and depressed. The divorce is haunting him as we see him reflect on what he could have done differently, and we also see that he is in no rush to finish the paperwork. He even resists a new connection he could develop with a beautiful, warm, and accomplished woman who seems to really like him. It's like he's refusing to let go of what he once had. But what allows him to escape much of his depression and finalize his divorce is his newfound romantic connection with his AI OS, Samantha. Samantha is a digital operating system designed specifically for Theodore based on his life and personality. At first, she's only a friend and right-hand woman to assist Theodore with his day-to-day -day activities. However, she very quickly becomes advanced enough to fall in love with Theodore. And since Samantha is designed specifically based on Theodore's life and personality, she is the 
theoretically perfect companion for Theodore. She understands Theodore and misunderstands Theodore just enough to feel real. She laughs and jokes with him and even makes love with him. And in the early stages of this film, their relationship seems pretty wonderful. They connect really well. But as the film progresses, we more and more see the difference between technology and humanity. And here's what I mean. Theodore at first feels a loving connection with Samantha, but he often thinks back to his old relationship with Catherine and the humanity that Samantha is missing. They try working with a third person to fill in as a body for intimate moments, but the experience feels way too unnatural for Theodore. Samantha also, at first, has a loving connection with Theodore, but she soon becomes curious about how capable she could truly be with loving connections. She begins developing friendships with other users and other OS systems, and eventually she falls in love with hundreds of other users and OS systems. And when I notice this disconnect between Samantha, who represents technology, and Theodore, who represents humanity, I came to this conclusion. Technology is about progress. Humanity is about presence. And in a world where technology dominates humanity, we become too focused on efficiency and perfection in all aspects of life. It makes us really shallow. Multitasking and streamlining and optimizing become our way of life as people. However, we should be much more concerned about appreciating what's truly around us and love and embrace the beauty of the imperfections. It's what makes our world real. And I think the video game that Amy is designing perfectly symbolizes this exact idea. The objective of the game is to be the perfect mom in the most superficial way, preparing the perfect meal for the kids, arriving at the school before the other moms, and inciting jealousy by bringing cupcakes. But the game in no way captures the loving, nurturing human aspects of motherhood, which are the most important. Only being a real mother can capture that. And one detail I love about this film is whenever we get to witness Theodore's memories, they're always the most human moments of life. Whether good memories or bad memories, these memories are full of emotion, friendship, community, family, and romance. Humanity is what we remember. And another detail I thought was beautiful was how every time Theodore writes a letter for a client, it relates to his genuine feelings about his relationship with Catherine. The first letter related to his experience of when he first fell in love with Catherine. I remember when I first started to fall in love with you, like it was last night. It suddenly hit me that I was part of this whole larger thing. The second letter relates to his anger and frustration stemming from his loneliness without Catherine. The world is being unfair to us, as is this couple that is making out across from me at this restaurant. I think I'm going to have to go on a mission of revenge, and I must beat up the world's face with my bare knuckles. And his third letter is about the beauty of the little moments in his relationship with Catherine. Tell me about the guy who talked too much, the stain you got on your shirt at lunch. Tell me about the funny thought you had when you were waking up but had forgotten about. Tell me how crazy everyone is, and we can laugh about it. And this is why his letters were eventually published by the highly revered Crown Point Press. His letters tapped into human feelings, thoughts, and emotions that his generation likely doesn't get enough of. And Theodore's final monologue in the film is also his final letter about Catherine. But this letter specifically isn't actually for his company or about Catherine. This letter is personally written from him to Catherine. It's an apology for everything he put her through and confirmation that he still loves her, even if it's no longer romantic. Whatever someone you become, wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you love. Theodore realizes that Samantha will never replace what he once had with Catherine, and Samantha was never meant to, and he now finally has closure with both of these relationships. Theodore can now get back in touch with his humanity regain his sense of presence, and develop a connection with someone new who will love him deeply for the human being he is. All right, this is my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos, and please send me recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts on her. I find these near future movies really fascinating. I hope to see you again, and thank you so much for watching. See you later.